Good morning to everyone in the Utsav family of churches. I want to thank all of you for giving this opportunity to me to come and share and bring God's word. We praise God that even through this difficult time, uh, God is enabling us to come together, to meet together, to worship together, and to hear God's word also. I want to thank uh, Pastor Shannon, Pastor Samir, and Pastor Arun, and uh, your leadership teams for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I want to, uh, I've put this title of this message as The Road to Transformation. Now, we would know that life is a journey. And, uh, and life is a journey of many ups and downs, more downs than ups. But this journey of ups and downs can also become a life-transforming journey in God. We believe that uh, this life is a journey. Our home is in heaven. But along with God, you know, this journey of ups and downs can become a beautiful life-transforming journey in God. We want to look at another journey uh, in the Bible that is given to us in Luke chapter 24 and verses 13 to 35. And we want to see how that journey also became a life transformation. Uh, transforming journey for the disciples over there. That particular passage is titled as the journey to Emmaus, on the road to Emmaus. I will not read the whole portion. Many of us may know that passage. And so here we see two disciples walking together. And this is after the death of Jesus and after the resurrection of Jesus. And they are perplexed. Uh, they do not know what has happened. And uh, Jesus is dead. Some women are saying that he's alive. They don't know what to believe. They don't know, uh, uh, you know how the future looks like for them. And as they're going through uh, these thoughts, Jesus walks alongside them. He, they are not able to recognize him, but Jesus walks alongside them, talks to them, brings them to a place where they're able to understand the scriptures about the Messiah and the suffering that he had to endure. And when they, in the evening, when they come to a particular place and Jesus seems like he's moving on, these disciples ask Jesus to stay back at their place. And when, they, when Jesus decides to stay back and when they're having their meal and when they break their bread, they recognize that this was Jesus. And now they can believe with their own eyes that they have seen Jesus. And they go back to the disciples back in Jerusalem. And they're able to proclaim and say, yes, Jesus is alive. And he is risen indeed. And they are able to dedicate their lives to the service of their Savior and their King. So that's this journey of Emmaus, on the road to Emmaus. I have divided this journey into four parts. And we want to look at the four parts uh, this morning. The first part, or the first part of this journey is called as a journey of confusion. And I want to read Luke chapter 24 and verses 19 to 21. It says the events involving Jesus of Nazareth, this, the disciples, these two disciples talking to Jesus, they answered, this man was a prophet, powerful in speech and action before God and all people. Our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to the, up to the sentence of death and they crucified him. But we were hoping he was the one who would redeem Israel. So this journey began for them as a journey of confusion because these disciples thought that Jesus is the Messiah and the King and he's going to establish a physical kingdom and they're going to be secure and happy and joyful in this kingdom and now he's dead and now some women are saying he's alive but they can't believe it. So they don't know, you know uh, what has happened to their king. They walked with them, but they don't know, in a sense, what the future holds for them. It's a confusing time that they are going through. And so we relate to it right now also. We are also now in a very difficult and confusing time. People are losing their jobs. Uh, there are salary pay cuts that people are experiencing. We do not know what's happening in the educational sphere. We don't know what's going to happen for the businesses also. Uh, in the banking sector, hospitals are in a bad state. Uh, nurses and doctors, they are 
overworked and uh, they are themselves falling sick. Many of them have died also. So uh, it's a very difficult time that we are also going through as a nation and nations across also. But we see that these disciples, even in this journey of confusion, they're able to talk to one another and they're able to keep walking. And I want to say that's what we want to keep doing also. We don't want to stop. We don't want to look back. But we want to keep moving. And we want to keep sharing. These disciples were sharing. They were pouring their hearts to one another. They were expressing themselves. And that's what like we also want to do. We want to keep walking. And we want to keep talking also. We need to take this time to connect to one another. To pour out our hearts with one another. To pray for one another. To support one another in what whatever possible way. And that's the only way for us to move forward. I know we have this privilege of watching uh, this uh, Sunday service either on YouTube, Zoom, or uh, Facebook. But I know that many of our Hindi churches, they don't have this facility. The only thing that they have is a phone. And many times during the week and even on Sundays, they're only able to call one another and talk to one another and pray for one another. And I'm told by some of our friends that they are talking and praying. They're having prayer meetings for one hour, two hours, just on the phone. And that's how God is encouraging them, enabling them to be strong in the word and supporting one another also. So I want to say that in this uh, difficult journey that we are going through of life in this particular time. It seems like a journey of confusion, but let's not give up. Let's not stop. Let's not turn back because God has good things in store for us. Because the second step of the journey is called the journey of companionship. And so I want to read for us verse 15 to 16. It says, and as they talked and deliberated, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Hallelujah. What a beautiful thing. That as they were walking, you know, perplexed. As they were walking in their confusion. Not knowing what the future holds for them. Jesus steps in. You know, he's a friend who steps in. He's a friend who does not leave us alone. Though they were not able to recognize him. He recognized them. He does not leave us alone. I want to say that. He is more concerned about our situation than we ourselves. It is true. It is absolutely uh, true. We don't even have to sometimes cry out to God. Before we even cry out, he steps in. And he walks with us. And he talks with us also. So I want to say that in these difficult times, we are not alone. Though we may not be able to see him, he is with us, walking with us. Especially in these weak times of us, he's walking with us to strengthen us. I want to say that the one who has endured every kind of crisis and has been victorious, he's the only one who can step in in our time of crisis and lead us to victory in him. Hallelujah. You know, that's what I want to say that Jesus Christ was totally abandoned by everyone. And even the father looked away from him at the cross. So he experienced the pain of loneliness. He experienced what suffering really was. And because he endured that and he was victorious, he is able to be with us. He is able to be with us. He faced the pain of separation so that he will never leave us. That is why his name is called Emmanuel. God with us. That God was forsaken by everyone so that that God can be with us so that we will never be forsaken by him at all in our lives. I want to say this story about uh, my mother-in-law who met with an accident and she had a fracture on her leg. She was uh, flown from Orissa to Bangalore in the hospital. It was supposed to be a simple uh, fracture that was there. And then they were supposed to uh, go through an, or she was supposed to go through an operation, uh, put the rods and the screws. But suddenly her oxygen saturation levels started going down and she came down to a very critical state. So much so, my, my, my wife had to go from Bombay. Uh, my wife's brother had to fly in from U.S. 
and they didn't know what was happening. My wife's family, she's, my wife is the only person who's not a doctor. They're all doctors. But still, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. They are the best of doctors. They are the best of care. And so Sunita was telling me, on one of the evenings when they were in the room together with the mother, they knew that she was critical. All the siblings were also called. As they were worshipping God through hymns, they suddenly experienced a warmth in the room. It was as if the presence of Jesus was there in the room. And it was just for a few seconds. And after that, after that time, it was as if like something had lifted off. And from the next day onwards, her oxygen saturation level started going up. And in the next 10 days, she was discharged out of the hospital. It was just a miracle. It is not because of the skill and the wisdom of doctors, but the Lord Jesus Christ stepped in at their deep point of need and brought healing and recovery and restoration uh, to my mother-in-law. And so I want to say that in our deep in our times of crisis, uh, in our difficult time, Jesus will step in as our companion and he will, he will deliver us. He will uh, bring joy into our hearts. Uh, he will lead us to the truth and uh, he will enable us to be victorious. He will not leave us alone. He will not forsake us. So that's the second part of the journey. So it was a journey of confusion and a journey of companionship, but it was also a journey of confrontation. Because that's what we read in verses 25 to 27. Then Jesus said to them, O foolish ones, how slow are your hearts to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was written in all the scriptures about himself. So it was not just a journey of confusion and companionship. But it was also a journey of confrontation. Jesus had to shake them. He said, oh, oh, you foolish ones. How slow of heart. How slow, to, how slow are you to understand the things of God? Didn't you know that the Messiah, the Savior had to suffer? And he had to explain to them. He had to shake them up. You know, he had to confront them. So it was not in that sense a very nice journey. It was also a confrontational journey also. So he had to explain to them that the Messiah had to suffer. He was establishing not a physical kingdom but a spiritual kingdom. And this spiritual kingdom is not established, established by causing suffering to others causing pain to others. But he himself went through pain and suffering and established the spiritual kingdom. Didn't they understand? Couldn't they understand? And that's how he had to shake them. And so today also, my friends, I think the Lord Jesus would confront us and would say, didn't I say in the world that in this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're always looking for happy moments, comfortable times, convenience you know, that will be around us. But no, we go through these times of suffering because our Lord Jesus Christ also went through times of suffering so, and death. And he was victorious so that our lives will be blessed, so that we would receive salvation. And so we also go through these times of suffering so that, you know, we are able to be a blessing to others. I know that many of our churches and many of our people, even in these days of difficulty, pain and suffering, they are out on the roads giving rations to different people. They are praying for the people. They are calling up people and so they themselves are putting their lives at risk to be a blessing to others and that's what the Lord Jesus would also call us uh, to do that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4 10 to 12 we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body so then death is at work in us but life is at work in you hallelujah times of suffering refine us and mature us as his disciples so that our lives will be a blessing to 
others. So it was a journey of confusion. It was a journey of companionship, but it was also a journey of confrontation, but it does not end there. It ends with as a journey of commitment. It, was, it ends as a journey of commitment because that's what the disciples experience. Verse 32 to 34, it says, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us as he spoke with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us and they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the leaven and those with them gathered together and they and saying the Lord has indeed risen and has appeared to Simon. Finally, that journey ends you know, as these disciples make their commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were now convinced, yes, the Messiah, the Savior is alive and has risen indeed. And they gave their rest of their lives in the service of this Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I am told, uh, we would all know that out of the 12 disciples, you know, all except the disciple, the apostle John, all of them were martyred. And I am told that Matthew, when he was killed, when he was tortured, every day they would cut off one organ of his body. They would not allow him to die at once. And they would cut off his arms, they would cut off his legs, and then as they would cut off these organs, they would put hot salt water on it so that he would not bleed to death. And finally, on the last day, they cut off his head. But in all those days, he did not deny Jesus to be his savior and his Lord. He would worship. So much was his, so radical was his commitment and devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ that these soldiers who were taking him through this torture, they gave their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they also were executed for the Lord Jesus Christ. But they stood committed till their death. And so I want to say that in this difficult time, in this time of crisis, in this downtime that we are going through, in this journey of life, may this journey for us also end as a journey of making a fierce commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to look back, not to turn back, not to stop, but to keep moving you know, and uh, you know, making a firm commitment to serve him till our last breath. And so I want to, as we just conclude, I want to say this journey of crisis may begin with confusion move on to companionship, and then there may be a confrontation also that we may face, but may this journey end as a journey of commitment. May this journey of crisis be the road for our transformation. God bless you. May we grow in our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and in the service to the Lord Jesus Christ, even in these difficult times. Thank you very much. God bless you.